How's it going? Ryan here with Berserk Custom Paint, and this video covers my mapping techniques, so check it out. Before we get started with this video guys, I wanted to let you know that this, just like my last video, is a much smaller portion of a bigger, bigger video that I'm making that covers my mini portraits or just really scaled down portraits. Uh, that large video, far more in-depth video, will be made available at CoastAirbrushTV.com. So stay tuned with my channel and I'll let you know everything you need to know about the links to get to my future videos. Also, if there's something in this video or maybe that you haven't seen yet that you want to know more of, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to cover it in future videos to make sure everybody gets all the information they're looking for. So stay tuned. All right, what I got here is a normal piece of paper that I printed out on just an average printer. Uh, you can do this low res because we're cutting it up, cutting it out so you can use less ink. I suggest if you're trying to save on ink, then you're probably going to want to use, you know, the setting, the print setting where you use the less amount of ink because you just want basic guidelines. You don't, you know, you don't need all that detail and the waste ink. So first thing I'm going to do is cut out the parts that I know I'm going to spray through, meaning I'm going to be spraying on a dark surface so I know I probably want to pull out the highlights. Or if you spray on a lighter surface, then you want to pull out your shadows. So here first I'm just going to cut out the basic shape. Just like that. And what I call this portion is mapping because it's giving you an idea of how everything is going to look once it's on. It's mapping it out, placeholding. And you'll see why in just a little bit. Okay, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. In fact, all that filigree in the background, uh, it's not my filigree. I just put it there to kind of get an idea of where my filigree is going to be later because I'm going to freehand all that filigree. This was just a, you know, something to get my brain kind of churning, but I'm not going to stick with it. So I can cut right through it. Okay, now to start with, that's all the piece I need. Um, what that is is going to be a placeholder, and I'm probably going to use this positive to put back on top of it to give me the line of the highlights here on this side. So you'll see that here in just a minute. Now we're in the mapping stage of the foreground and I've got a pretty good background set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my main foreground image, which is her portrait here, placing it in a place that I think is going to be best for the composition to get an idea of how it's going to look, which right offhand I think that's the best orientation. So I'm going to take, and by the way, I have sprayed Elmer's Sticky Glue. It's an easy tack from Elmer's. I got it at my local Hobby Lobby. I sprayed that on the back, just a light tack of it, just because it, so I don't have to use tape. And it's just a lot more handy. The thing to remember, if you ever do use easy tack and you're using a water base or if you're using a, uh, a urethane paint, uh, if you put it on too wet, it will soak into the paper and it will put the glue down uh, and kind of mess up your painting a little bit. So just use it when you're spraying very lightly. Anyway, like I said, I like this orientation the most. I think I'm going to move her just a hair closer to the center so there's just, there's not so much background going on. Okay. Now I'm going to place my negative. This would be my positive stencil. This is my negative stencil. Okay. And what you want to do is just line it up to where you think that placeholder was. Like I said, this one won't go out of shape right here because it's, it's solid. 
but this one will go out of shape. As you can see, I can move it in and out. So if you put this one down first, you can use it to line up your outside so that you know that you haven't distorted the image any. So just go ahead and move it. Okay, and there you go. Now I can take out my center and go ahead and start placing in covering up that that uh, background. Now there are different ways you could do this. You could have put her down and do the background, uh, you know, with the mask on it. The reason I did the background first is because it was very wet. I was using a lot of spraying and all these different other things. I didn't want to ruin my paper, so I figured if I establish the background first, you know, then my stencil won't get ruined. So just lightly cover it. You don't want to put it on too wet. You also don't want to hit this back side too much because you don't want a hard edge here. So just stick to the places you know there's going to be a hard edge. Turn my air pressure down. It's a little wild right now. Just go ahead and cover up that background. As you can see, I'm not coming to this side. Staying over here. Now I'm pretty close to where I want to be. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pull this, but don't ruin it. Save it because we're going to put it aside because you're going to need it again later. And we've got kind of a rest uh, or a kind of a soft. We've got kind of kind of a soft image of what she's going to look like in there. We have to make a decision here. Do we want to paint our highlights in and use that as our uh, mapping? Or do we want to paint our shadows in now? And I think I'm going to go ahead and do my highlights and map everything out in white. Then I'm going to come back in and shadow it later. Like I said, I'm working in a gray right now. And it's really soft, so I have a lot of room to build it. It's going to be a ghosted image. So what we're going to do when we cut this out is we're going to focus on the bright areas, cut those out, and then uh, work from there. Right here, as you can see, I've got my stencil laid on this white piece of paper. It's because I don't know if I'm going to need, because I'm going to rip this stencil apart later, and I don't know if I'm going to need any of these uh, outside edges later. So just to save them before I go ripping the stencil apart. I'm going to make a copy of it by just spraying through like this. I'll even copy some of my inner parts here. And I also have another printed image of it too as backup for my backup. So I do recommend anytime you're using printed images like this, uh, you want to print maybe two or three copies just in case you'll have something. So as you can see here, if I pull it up, all I have to do is cut exactly on those lines and I'll have an exact saved piece of that. So when I, if I need to do something later with it, I can just butt it up against there and use it as like a freehand shield. I'm going to go ahead and place my stencil down now and go ahead and just line it up with the original guidelines that you've created for yourself. Stick it down. Everything down, get it down pretty good. And what I've done is this original white that I made right here, it's a baseline white. It's a mid-tone white. So in order for these stencil parts here to show up, I have to brighten up my white. So what I did is I added, I poured some of my pigment in here. I poured some of this mid-tone pigment, which is a gray. And then I took my pure white here, 
mixed it about 50 50 or even more probably and then I added some reducer so basically what I'm saying is this color here is a lot brighter than the color that's down that way I'll be able to see my stencil show up but it's not as harsh as if I would have used the white originally and had to blend it out against a darker background I used a medium background so let's go ahead and put that in there like that put the whites of her eyes in that part of her nose this part of her mouth here get those highlights here Now here's where the flipping comes into play. I can actually take and flip this up and it'll give me the top of her lips here. Okay, let's see what we did. All right, now if you'll notice, if you can zoom in here, what we have is very faint, very faint. But that's the way that I like it because I don't like to try to work around disguising my stencil the whole time. So if I keep my stencil faint, then when I go to add my future layers or whatever, I can just be worried about the values and the colors and the bright brightness and the highlights and all that as it is rather than fighting a, a stencil underdrawing the whole time.